Hello friends, I am Dr. Anjum Rashid. Today I will talk about Fenkani anemia in children. Our learning objectives are etiology, pathogenesis, epidemiology, clinical features, complication, diagnosis and treatment. I will also discuss follow-up monitoring, prognosis and prevention of Fenkani anemia. Fenkani anemia was first described and named in 1927 by a Swiss pediatrician Guido Fenkani. He reported the disease in three brothers with a specific combination of bone marrow failure and various physical abnormalities such as short stature, hypogenadism and hyperpigmentation. Fenkani anemia is the most frequently reported of the rare inherited bone marrow failure syndromes. Fenkani anemia is primarily inherited as an autosomal recessive manner. Now one uncommon form which is FANCB is a X-linked recessive disorder. Now each patient with Fenkani anemia is homozygous or doubly heterozygous for mutation in one of the 15 genes known to be responsible for Fenkani anemia. So these 15 mutated genes accounting for most of the cases are FANCA, B, C, D1 which is also known as BRCA2, then D2, E, F, G, I, J, L, M, N, O and P. Now two additional genes which have been published are XRCC2 and ECCR4. Now normally these genes encode proteins which are involved in DNA damage recognition and prepayment of the biochemical pathways. Therefore, these mutated genes products lead to genomic instability and chromosomal fragility. Now, an additional mechanism that may contribute to disease pathogenesis is the inability of the Fenkani anemia cell to remove oxygen-free radicals and this result in oxidative damage. Now, leukocyte telomere length is significantly shortened but telomerase activity is increased. This suggests a high proliferative rate of marrow progenitors and this ultimately lead to their premature senescence. Now, increased bone marrow cell apoptosis occur and it is mediated by FAS which is a membrane glycoprotein receptor and contain an integral death domain. Now, a constant finding is diminished cellular interleukin-6 production along with the markedly heightened tumor necrosis factor alpha generation in Fenkani anemia. Fenkani anemia occur in all racial and ethnic groups. Male to female ratio is about 1.2 ratio 1 and 75% of the patient they are 3 to 15 years of age at the time of diagnosis. However, individual with birth defects they are diagnosed at a younger age than a person without birth defects. Now, there can be sibling discordance in clinical and hematological findings even in affected monozygotic twins. Now, majority of the patient at the time of diagnosis have both typical physical anomalies and abnormal hematological findings. However, one third of the patient they may have normal physical features but abnormal hematological findings. Now, a few patients they can have physical anomalies and normal hematological findings. Now, I will discuss the clinical manifestations. 75% of individuals with Fenkani anemia have at least one physical anomaly. Skin abnormalities are the most common present in 55% cases. There is hyperpigmentation of the trunk, neck and intraginous area as well as scapular spots and vitiligo. Short stature is present in 51% cases and low birth weight is in 10%. Now upper limb anomalies are present in 43% cases. There is absent or hypoplastic radii. Thumb may be hypoplastic, supernumerary, bifid, absent or just attached by a thread. Hands may have clinodectly or hypoplastic thinner eminence. Radial pulse may be weak or absent. Now hypogonadal and genital changes are present in 35% cases and these are mostly in male. Now renal malformation are present in 21% cases and include ectopic pelvic or horseshoe shaped kidney. Now together head, face, neck and spine anomalies are present in 30% cases. There may be microcephaly, hydrocephalus, micrognathia, and a peculiar face, bird face. Now, lower limb anomalies are present in 10% cases and may be in the form of toes syndactyly, short toes, club feet, rocker bottom feet, or six toes. Now, congenital hip dislocation, abnormal femur, and abnormal legs may be present. 
Eyes anomalies are present in 23% cases. There may be small eyes, strabismus, epicanthal fold, hypertelorism. Ear anomalies are present in 9% cases and include deafness, abnormal shape and size of ear, atresia, dysplasia, and low set ears. Now, gastrointestinal and cardiovascular malformation are present in 11% cases and include high arch palate, atresia of esophagus, duodenum, jejunum, imperforate anus, tracheoesophageal fistula, congenital heart diseases. Now, CNS anomalies include arterial malformation, small pituitary gland, or cerebellar hypoplasia. Patients are usually intelligent, but cognitive delay are present in 10% cases. Now, bone marrow failure is usually present in the first decade. And first sign of hematological problem is usually petechiae and bruises with later onset of paler fatigue and infections. No friends, the important complication is the cancer. Most frequent solid tumors are the squamous cell carcinoma of the head, neck and upper esophagus, followed by carcinoma of the vulva, annex, cervix and the lower esophagus. Now, human papilloma virus is the suspected pathogen. Friend, it is also suggested that solid tumors remain a major threat to the older patient. There is a study that the risk of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma is higher in patients who had received bone marrow transplantation. Some patients also experience oral cancer after bone marrow transplantation. Now, benign and malignant liver tumors, including adenoma and hepatoma, they are usually associated with androgen therapy. Androgen therapy is also responsible for peliosis hepatis, which is the blood-filled hepatic sinusoid. But this condition is reversible and uh, it may regress. Now, clonal marrow abnormalities are common in Fenkeny anemia and they can progress to myelodysplasia syndrome and acute myelogenous leukemia. Majority of the cases of acute myeloid leukemia, they develop between the ages of 15 to 35 years. Now, a study, a study suggests that patients with Fenkeny anemia, greater age is positively correlated with incidence of chronic kidney disease. No friend, patient with biallelic mutation in FANCD1 gene, they have a very severe phenotype and these include features of vertebral, anal, cardiac, tracheoesophageal and limb associations. Now these patients, they have an extraordinary high risk of acute myeloid leukemia, brain tumor, especially medulloblastoma and Wilms tumor. Now friends, patients with large number of birth defects, they are at high risk of early onset of severe aplastic anemia. While patients with few anomalies, they are more likely to develop leukemia or solid tumor as young adults. Now I will discuss the diagnosis. Complete blood count may show trilineage pancytopenia or it may reveal macrocytic RBCs. Now, macrocytosis, thrombocytopenia, or leukopenia, they may precede full-blown aplasia. Bone marrow aspiration and biopsy may reveal hypocellularity, loss of myelite and erythroid precursors, megakaryocyte with relative lymphocytosis, or there may be full-blown aplasia with a fatty marrow. Now, chromosomal breakage test is the gold standard test for the diagnosis of Fenkeny anemia. It is usually examined in peripheral blood mitogen stimulated lymphocyte in the presence of DNA crosslinkers, dipoxybutane, or mitomycin C. Now, in Fenkeny anemia homozygote cell, these agents lead to increased number of chromosomal breaks, gaps, rearrangement, and classical tri or quadriradial figures. However, 10 to 15 percent patient they may have somatic mosaicism. They have mixed population of somatic cells, some with two abnormal alleles and some with one. Now, their lymphocyte may not show characteristic high level of chromosomal fragility in these chromosomal breakage tests. In these patients, testing of skin fibroblasts instead of lymphocyte will confirm the diagnosis. Flow cytometry is a screening test which is used in some centers. It is the study of cell cycle. Fenkeny anemia cell cultures with nitrogen, mustard, and DNA crosslinker demonstrate a block or delay in gap 2 mitosis. 
Additional studies which should be done in a patient with Fanconi anemia include serum alpha fetoprotein it is increased fetal hemoglobin is also increased for age due to stress erythropoiesis now red cell adenosine deaminase level is normal serum erythropoietin is markedly raised it may be low in patient with impaired renal failure now skeletal survey should be done to identify all developmental defects involving bone however radiation exposure should be minimum in this patient now abdominal ultrasound is done to document the size and location of kidney echocardiography is done to identify congenital heart defects central nervous system mri is done to identify brain and spinal cord structural defects Now endocrine evaluation should be done for growth hormone deficiency and hypothyroidism if there is short stature. Next is the identification of complementation group and gene analysis but these tests are done only in the research laboratories. Complementation groups can be identified by using cell fusion technique. Patient lymphocytes are treated with retroviral vectors which contain normal clones of known Fanconi anemia genes. correction of chromosomal breakage or of impaired growth by a specific factor indicate that the patient cell have a mutation in that gene now the specific mutation can then be determined by various molecular diagnostic test other is the next generation sequencing this technique directly detect the pathogenic mutation and it bypass the complementation analysis step so simplify the diagnostic workup it will enter the routine diagnostic workup in near future Prenatal Fanconi anemia diagnosis can be done by demonstration of chromosomal breaks in cells obtained in utero from chorionic villus biopsy, amniocentesis or chordocentesis. Prenatal diagnosis can also be done by identification of Fanconi anemia gene mutation in DNA extracted from fetal cells. Now friends I will discuss the treatment. First is the consultations. A hematologist or multidisciplinary team should supervise the patient with Fanconi anemia. If the hematological findings are stable and there is no transfusion requirement, then observation is indicated. Subspecialty consultation for anomalies and disabilities should be arranged during this time. Supportive care include uh, treatment of significant cytopenia. These include hemoglobin less than 8 g per deciliter. platelet less than 30000 and neutrophil less than 500 per microliter anemia should be treated with transfusion of packed rbcs and they should be leukodepleted and not from the family members to avoid sensitization in the case of future transplantation thrombocytopenia should be treated with similarly treated platelet transfusion and single donor platelets should be preferred to reduce the frequency of antibody formation now neutropenia usually respond to granulocyte colony stimulating factor it increase the absolute neutrophil count and occasionally boost platelet counts and hemoglobin level now combination therapy of granulocyte colony stimulating factor and erythropoietin result in improved neutrophil count in almost all patient and a sustained rise in platelet and hemoglobin level in about 1/3 of the patient however most patient lose this response after 1 year due to progression of marrow failure Now another supportive therapy is the antifibrinolytic agents which is the amino caproic acid it decreases bleeding particularly oral mucosal bleeding Now hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is the only curative therapy for the hematological abnormalities Now patient less than 10 year old who undergo transplantation using an HLA identical sibling donor have a survival rate of more than 80% while survival rates are lower for patient more than 10 year old who undergo this procedure now for patient who do not have an HLA match sibling donor transplantation from a match unrelated donor or umbilical cord blood banks should be arranged now survival rate in these cases is about 50% molecular technology has led to pre implantation genetic diagnosis on parent derived blastomeres and this can find an HLA match sibling donor without fanconi anemia Now next is the androgen therapy. Androgens are used in patient with pancytopenia in whom transplantation is not an option and they produce a response in 50% patient. Now androgen increase the production and urine excretion of erythropoietin and stimulate erythropoiesis. They also make hematopoietic stem cell more responsive to differentiation. Now with androgen therapy first there is reticulocytosis and a rise in hemoglobin in about 1 to 2 months. WBC count may increase next followed by platelet counts. 
but this may take many months to achieve maximal response. Now, lowest effective dose should be used and when the response plateau, the dosage should be slowly tapered but not stopped entirely. Side effects of androgen therapy include mesclonization, premature closure of epiphysis, depression, anxiety, insomnia, elevated hepatic enzyme, cholestatic jaundice, pilosis hepatis, liver tumors, blood lipid changes such as decreased high density lipoprotein or increased low density lipoprotein causing increased risk of atherosclerosis or coronary artery diseases. Denazole can cause intracranial hypertension and increased blood pressure. Now, contraindications of androgens include nephrosis or nephrotic phase of nephritis, hypersensitivity and severe hepatic dysfunction. Now, low-dose prednisolone orally every second day can be added to androgen therapy. However, this is controversial and uh, this corticosteroid may counter androgen-induced growth acceleration and prevent thrombocytopenic bleeding by promoting vascular stability. Now, fifth treatment is the surgical care. Hand surgery and splinting may be required for thumb and radial anomalies. Surgery is also required for correction of skeletal anomalies, congenital heart defects, tracheoesophageal fistula, imperforate anus, genital anomalies, and other renal malformation. Now, cancer surgery should be performed by experienced surgeon in consultation with hematologist and oncologist. Now, gene therapy for Fanconi anemia is currently under research. Now then is the activity restriction. Patient with thrombocytopenia should avoid trauma such as that resulting from contact sports and during these they should use helmet and padding. And those with anemia they should participate in sternus activity only under supervision and only as tolerated. Now those with severe neutropenia they need to avoid exposure to people with active infections. Now friends I will discuss the follow up monitoring. Blood counts should be done every 1 to 3 months. Bone marrow aspiration and biopsy should be done annually for leukemia and myelodysplasia syndrome. Now, screening for glucose intolerance and hyperinsulinemia should be done annually or biannually. Assessment for solid tumor should be done annually. Beginning at Minard, screening for gynecological cancer in females should be done annually. Ultrasonography for liver tumors and pileosis hepatitis should also be done annually. And serial screening for androgen and steroid side effects should also be done. Now I will discuss the prevention. Carrier screening can be offered as a part of reproductive counseling. In utero prenatal diagnosis is available and pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is also possible. Now in families with an affected proband, cord blood may be saved for future use as a source of hematopoietic stem cells at the birth of a sibling. Now I will discuss the prognosis. Median survival is about 30 years. However, success with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation have dramatically improved the outcome. Now, it is important to mention that due to high sensitivity to chemotherapeutic agents which damage the DNA, the outcome of patient of Fanconi anemia with cancer is quite poor. Now, friends, although many patients of Fanconi anemia, they are short and have skeletal anomalies, but their intelligence is usually normal. So, education and career planning should be encouraged. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.